Welcome to Digital Foundry 2020 and the first DF Direct in what I think will be an extremely important year for the games business and our coverage of it. Big changes are coming. Yes, we've got Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 confirmed and I also think we'll be seeing a huge shake up in the PC market too. And it all starts at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, CES, where many expected console-related gigaton reveals. Well, they just haven't really come to pass, have they? Now, that's not to say that there hasn't been some interesting next-gen console-related stuff happening simultaneously with the event, though. But funnily enough, for my money, the most interesting reveal is, well, it's this. It's Phil Spencer's new profile picture on Twitter. So what's the big deal about this? Well, it's our first look in the flesh at Project Scarlet Silicon, presumably the processor at the heart of Xbox Series X. And of course, it's set off a flurry of speculation. But why? Well, while we do have a fragment of a spec leak hinting at Series X GPU power, that's about it. The size of a processor can be indicative in some respects of its performance, and some inferences can be made about build cost because, well, putting cutting-edge silicon together isn't cheap. We can also compare and contrast the size of this chip with other AMD parts and also prior Microsoft console hardware. When so much of a new console design is shrouded in mystery, it's neat to be able to speculate based on physical form factors, and yes, we'll be doing that a bit later on in this video. Now, as we are pretty close to official console reveals, there has been a ton of speculation about potential new PlayStation and Xbox information at CES, despite this show never really being a venue for big, flashy events of that scale. Consoles now, they, they may be consumer electronic devices, which is a good fit for CES, of course, but the platform holders have preferred to host their own events on their own terms in their own timescales when we look back at the past. But piggybacking onto AMD presentations within big trade shows, well, that's not unknown. That's where we saw our first controversy. Early on in the show, we saw a dynamic 3D render, which was all about AMD shouting from the rooftops that it's in the next gen console machines. And we also saw a new take on Xbox Series X and yes, a look at the rear of the machine, dual HDMI ports, dual USB-C, TOS link, Ethernet, figure eight power input, but weirdly no ventilation. Okay, so personally I'm expecting a high power device requiring more power than a console vendor would comfortably want to draw from a figure eight power lead. And yeah, this thing needs serious cooling, so I honestly expected to see vents and whatnot on the rear of the unit. But hey, this is an AMD event. They're official partners of Microsoft, so this is an official asset, right? Well, no. And what we learned about this was pretty astonishing. It turns out that whoever produced this 3D render for AMD popped over to, uh, well, get this, turbosquid.com and downloaded this model, which was produced with no input from Microsoft whatsoever. And it actually comes with a license prohibiting it from being used for anything other than editorial purposes. Uh, promotion definitely not included there, so not good AMD. Now, AMD did reveal new Navi hardware, a cutback 5700 series card in the form of the new 5600 XT, which we'll be reviewing in due course. We also got to see something quite fascinating. The firm's new seven nanometer APU, codenamed Renoir, and effectively delivering eight cores and 16 threads to both slim and light and performance orientated notebooks. And uh, in the desktop side of things, a 64 core thread ripper. Yes, please, $3,990. No thanks, but just wait a second. This is CES, where Sony itself has a big presence and indeed its own press event. So how about some uh, new PlayStation 5 info? Hopes were high going into this one, but the only thing new that we actually got to see was a logo. I guess at least this sorts out labeling on our comparison videos in future, but yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting much and nothing was delivered, so, well, there we go. But let's go back for a minute to the Phil Spencer tweet, because this isn't actually fake. And uh, AMD's PC reveals aside, it's actually something new and of interest. So here's the deal. I've mentioned at length in prior videos how not every piece of silicon that comes off the production line is viable. Defects in the silicon are pretty much the main reason why we have, like an RX 5700 XT and a 5700. They're both using the same chip. 
They both come from the same production line. However, imperfections in the silicon mean that not every chip can be fully enabled. No problem, just disable some of the chip and sell it as a cheaper product. But even then, there's still wastage. Some chips are completely non-viable, and what do you do with those if you're not going to throw them away? Well, why not make them into great little conversation pieces, or in Phil Spencer's case, what he describes as a lucky coin of sorts. A couple of my favourite desktop adornments here likely exist for the same reason. This is my Project Scorpio Memento from my visit to Microsoft back in 2017. Now to the human eye, it's a flawless chip, but it wasn't good enough to make it into a console. No problem though, it's a lovely little piece of decoration and I love having it on my desk. And it's also why I like to display this AMD Radeon 7. The first 7 nanometer desktop GPU and AMD mounted one of those defective chips within a cool presentational stand thing. I mean, I kind of like it. But is there anything we can learn from Series X itself from Spencer's new profile picture? Now this has caused quite a lot of debate in tech forums online. Size of the silicon. Yeah, it's pretty important stuff, but how on earth can you tell how big the chip is? Especially when it's shot at an angle and with no obvious reference points for comparison. Well, first of all, lens distortion correction, perspective correction. This is all the sort of stuff you can achieve in Adobe Photoshop a tool that I have some small competence with. So, to begin with, I speculated that the chip itself might be the same kind of 50mm module that the Scorpio engine inside Xbox One X was. So, bit of Photoshop magic, you end up with something like this. The only problem here is that uh, the processor area that's actually represented uh, once you've manipulated the image in those directions. It's actually smaller than Project Scorpio, smaller than the Xbox One X's silicon. So clearly that line of inquiry, measuring the physical size of the entire package there, it's off beam, it's not accurate. However, there have been a couple of other reasonable attempts to get the Series X silicon dimensions hammered down from this image. WCCF Tech came up with this image using uh, the surface mounted components there for reference. They speculate that the chip is 401 square millimetres, an 11.7% increase in area over Xbox One X's chip. So extra area and a process shrink. That should be enough to deliver the 56 compute units suggested, and let me stress that again, suggested by the recent AMD testing leak. Now you see the thing about that leak is that the information in it is so sparse, we don't know whether those 56 compute units are the full chip, or whether Microsoft will need to disable some of those CUs to increase the production yield, or whether they already have. Spec leaks from a good source are useful, but let's not read too much into what's being presented there. Those uh, leaks were very definitely without any kind of context, and the data itself very fragmented. And this makes actual physical evidence, like Spencer's tweet, very valuable. But there are other ways to assess that picture. The pitch between surface-mounted components has been used by some, delivering a chip that's estimated to be 380 square millimetres in size, similar to the measurements derived from the E3 Project Scarlet teaser. Now I like to muck about in Photoshop as much as the next man, so I thought I'd have a go too. I thought I'd try a hybrid approach here, using both the surface-mounted components and the pitch between them to scale a perspective corrected scarlet processor image. My thinking being that if I can match both across all corners of my tweaked image, I should be in the ballpark. The area of the processor in my tweaked image is about 13% larger than the Scorpio engine on Xbox One X, so just a bit bigger than WCCF Tech's measurement of about 401 square millimeters. I think I'm at about 405. To be honest though, Perspective twisting and warping, the margin of error is really high and you know it's hardly a pristine quality image we had to work with to begin with. Bottom line though, I do think that Series X will feature the largest console processor we've seen and by quite a margin. And this is a very physical, real investment by Microsoft. The larger the die, the more difficult it is to fabricate and the more expensive it'll be to make. Obviously, I'm going to be absolutely fascinated to see how all of this pays off in specs and performance terms. But that's all from me for now. I'll be back soon with more stuff, including a behind the scenes look at how we're preparing for the next gen console and PC games 
to come here at Digital Foundry. We've shown before how we've built our own tools to measure performance, but these tools were designed in the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 era. What was then 900,000 pixels per frame to analyze is now up to 8 million in the 4K era. And this is just the beginning of a process that's going on here to optimize what we do and thinking about the games of tomorrow, and how we should be assessing them. But that's all for me for now. Please do like and subscribe to support the work we do here. Ring the bell, the bell, ring it for instant notifications whenever we post new stuff. And yeah, the DF Patreon, it makes such a difference in making the work we do viable. And of course, you get pristine quality video downloads for your contributions. And yeah, the Patreon itself, we're going to be revamping that soon to offer more value. So look out for more news on that soon. But from me for now, thanks for watching.